And we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. As usual, it's me, Jake, and today we're taking a quick look at Grand Theft Auto V. Yes, the newly released official PS5 and Xbox Series X and S versions, because we're now on like, the, what is it, the third generation of Grand Theft Auto V? The game originally released in 2013. Where were you in 2013? Where, where was I? I don't even know. Uh, so because this channel takes any opportunity to talk about Grand Theft Auto, we had to take a look. And uh, also, I never did a before you buy on the original base game. So there's that. Let's jump in. This new version brings it to the next gen consoles with some modern graphical features and takes advantage of a few things like 3D audio and haptic feedback. And straight up, it seems like it certainly brings it up to par. You know, we've been playing all day here, and this footage is both PS5 and Xbox Series X versions, and it looks good. It's not life-changing, you know, do not expect a remake here or anything. This is just a re-release. You might have been looking for that, you might not have been, I don't know, it's that simple. You technically have to pay to get this upgrade, and it does seem like a competent port. I know a lot of people have felt iffy because of the state of how uh, the Grand Theft Auto trilogy released a few months back, but so far with this, we haven't seen any red flags. It's GTA V with a higher resolution, better frame rate, seemingly a bit more detail, and some ray traced lighting and reflections. Now, it might not look like too much in this YouTube video. YouTube kind of puts a damper on things sometimes with uh, compression, but in real life on a good TV and HDR, this thing is pretty smooth and nice looking. It's got moments where it definitely shows its age. It is still very much a game from 2013. Granted, like a really big budget, well done game from 2013, but still, a game from 2013, but that's kind of expected here. You know, this upgrade isn't gonna change your life or anything, but it seems pretty rock solid for what they set out to do here. Y you have the choice of three different graphics modes, depending on your preference. Fidelity mode gives you best visuals and native 4K on Series X and PS5, but it's 30 FPS. Now, to be fair, it seems like a pretty solid 30 FPS for the most part to our untrained eyes, but yeah. Then there's performance mode, which is 60 FPS with an upscaled 4K resolution. Now the upscaling looks good enough to me and the visuals don't take a hit. It looks good and it's smooth. Then there's performance RT mode or performance ray tracing mode, which is upscaled 4K, 60 FPS with ray tracing enabled. This looks the best, it seems, and is still smooth. This is what we mostly played on, especially on the PS5 version. Uh, blasting through the city or the countryside at high speeds looks good. And even with a lot of action on screen, like, you know, like a big police chase with helicopters and everything, everything seems to be good. Now, load times make a hell of a difference. Obviously, that big front end load is shortened up, which is noticeable, but it's really cool to just do the quickly swap between characters thing on the character switching screen. So if you've never played GTA V story mode, it centers around three characters that after a certain point are out living in the world doing their own thing separately, and you can swap between them at any time. This transition between them used to kind of feel like a stylized loading screen with a bit of a delay now it feels like it's just a zoom out and then zoop and a zoom in to another character. It's, it's really cool and makes all the difference now. Now, people who've played the PC version and have access to mods will obviously say this new version isn't really a big deal, but if you're a console player, this is the best version you're gonna get. Now, you're also able to do a save migration from previous gen to this gen, which is nice via uh, the Rockstar Games Social Club thing. Uh, and they throw a couple of exclusive items and stuff your way too for GTA Online, most notably house special works with a few new missions and races and car customization options. So no, it's not exactly like the jump from Xbox 360 to Xbox One or PS3 to PS4 with the first person mode and the bigger feeling overhauls, no. Now on the bright side, them taking advantage of little things like the PS5 DualSense controller tech is nice. There's a bit more subtlety to different road textures and the controller will react to certain things differently like rain and stuff. Uh, the pedals feel like you gotta push them a little bit. ADS and shooting feels good. These things are just nice little thoughtful additions. The game itself, now you can access uh, story mode or online mode right from the main menu because at this point, you know, this far in, GTA Online is its own beast. It's become its own huge thing and some people might be jumping in just for that. But story mode 
itself is nice to revisit. It's a wild and weird story in an awesome satirical Rockstar game style world. You know, this doesn't quite connect with me as much as San Andreas or Grand Theft Auto 4's story and characters really did. That's just me personally. But upon replaying it again, I did kind of notice some more subtleties here and there. And I'm a little older now. I understand plots a little better. Uh, but the idea to center it around three main characters, Franklin, Trevor, and Michael, is really ambitious. And each character brings their own unique thing to the story, from skill set and sense of humor to just worldview, really, and uh, different approaches and different settings. Michael brings a kind of subtler, older guy, retired crime, midlife crisis story. Franklin brings a kind of full flesh journey from one walk of life to another completely crazy one. And Trevor is just kind of like the chaos element, the insanity. People really like Trevor. I'm gonna like say something blasphemous here. I could find him kind of annoying, but still Stephen Ogg, the, the voice actor, the portrayal of him is entertaining. And it's a lengthy adventure with like a couple of really boring side missions here and there. I'm looking at you like warehouse container shipping one, but like there are still tons of good entertaining ones mostly. And every voice actor absolutely kicks Ass, and some of the satire of the world, like the poking fun of social media and pop culture, is still pretty decent. It's been a long time though, and you'll notice a bit, but I can only imagine what type of stuff they'd make fun of in the eventual inevitable Grand Theft Auto 6. You know, replaying this one here actually got me thinking about the future a bit, and I'm, I'm really curious and kind of excited. But if you've never played the single player adventure, again, it's not quite my favorite of the whole series, but it's still an entertaining adventure worth seeing. The music's really good, the set pieces are really good, the world is really damn good. I mean, Los Santos and the surrounding region and the state of San Andreas is really, really well realized. Even now in 2022, this world can still kick the pants off of some video games' worlds. It's dense and interesting with wacky pedestrians and fun secrets. And like I said at the start, now it looks a little better. Now the same goes for GTA Online. If you've never jumped in, it technically has way more content than ever. Like, I've never been super big into it, uh, just kind of dabbled here and there, and I was never into the additional microtransactions or anything, but there's no denying that there is a lot of game here, and you can spend a lot of time in it. They finally streamlined the career starting, and jumping in fresh is a way better and more immediately engaging experience now. It doesn't feel like just a single player light start to Grand Theft Auto Online. Now it has like full-fledged bases of operations and jobs and careers that you start out with and it's just so much more customizable. And like I said, engaging right from the start. It makes a hell of a difference if you were ever interested. It's like almost like a completely different game at this point after so many years. Now overall, is Grand Theft Auto V next gen worth the asking price? I'm not so sure. But is it worth the upgrade price? Maybe, yeah. If you dropped off and you were looking to get back in, they do what they can to make it as easy as possible and it looks a little better. That's really it. It's not a disaster, thankfully. It's just exactly what was expected. More Grand Theft Auto V. And if you're playing on console, probably the best way to experience it. But hey, that's it before you buy, guys. You know how this works. By now, we give you some pros, some cons, and some personal opinion. And now we want to hear yours down in the comments. First things first, before the product itself, like, what's your favorite character of the three main dudes? What's your favorite moment from the game? Just whether it's online or in the single player story. And where are you at in general with this whole upgrade thing? Do you think you're going to spend a couple of bucks to get this version, maybe from your PS4 now to your PS5? Maybe you're still hunting for one of these consoles. Maybe you don't care. If you're playing on Xbox, we'd love to know if you're playing it on Xbox Series X or Series S. Really let us know anything you want about Grand Theft Auto V, whether it's old gen or new gen or whatever. Let's talk about this stuff and maybe if you, if you want to get spicy in the comments, the future of Grand Theft Auto with a GTA 6. But if you enjoyed this video and you enjoyed seeing some gameplay front and center, just some raw information and knowing what this thing is, clicking the like button's all you gotta do. It really helps us out if we helped you out. Thank you. But if you're new, consider subscribing, maybe hitting that notification bell because we put out videos every single day day and we're almost at 7 million subscribers. Oh my goodness. But hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.